Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a third part in my uh, series of videos on looking at a clothoid approximated transition for the apple corner. So in this video, I'm going to uh, quickly explore the pill or the lozenge forms. This is the side button on, on the uh, Apple Watch 6. So I've got this out of their uh, guidelines, scaled it appropriately based on the drawings. So I'm going to see if the clothoid approximation that I came up with in the first video works for for a full uh, like a full arc on the end here. To begin with, there are a few differences with the uh, with the pill form. If I go back into the original construction for the MacBook Air uh, corner, which has a it's driven by the radius, and then that radius there's a ratio um, that I figured out based on the result from the grasshopper clothoid transition we have to set the the radius back from the edge so so it's not actually tangent to the side edges but if we jump back over into the pill form the end of the pill obviously is the maximum dimension like in a bounding box so this kind of requires a different approach so i've come up with a couple of other ratios to use so I've got ratios, the top ones here, these are driving, so if the radius is driving the corner, in the in the case of this 90 degree corner for the for the uh, MacBook M1, where you have a set radius here, and you adjust that radius, and then these dimensions here change to suit based on these top two ratios. So for the pill form, I've figured out you probably want to have a driven radius, because we know the we know the pill height, but the pill height isn't the same as the diameter uh, of the arc on the end. Because we're using this clothoid transition, we know that that radius has to be smaller. So I've inverted the uh, radius centre from horizontal edge. So instead of doing the blend from the corner like here, I instead am going to figure out where this blend starts based on a distance back from the from the radius and the radius is going to be tangent to the to the end of the bounding box of the pill form and the second one is we've got a driven radius we know the height of the pill is say four millimeters so that radius is going to be four millimeters divided by two and then multiplied by 0.9756 okay so i'm going to jump into solidworks and just just roll through my uh, exploration here and and show you what worked and what probably hasn't. Okay, so there's the result. If I just roll back and show you how I built this, I've got some imported curves. So these are the curves that you saw before in Rhino. So this is taken out of the Apple guidelines. And to start with, I've created a bounding box. So I have some equations set up. So I've got the button length, which is 11. I've got the button height, which is 4. I've got the driven arc radius which is the button height, which is 4 divided by 2, multiplied by that multiplier that I showed you in Rhino. And then the blend start distance from arc centre is the driven arc radius. So this one here, multiplied by the other multiplier. Okay, so bounding by... Bounding. Then I've got the corner construction. So as I said... Uh, the difference being this from a 90 degree corner, the arc actually touches the end because it is the maximum, you know, there's no line going down here. So the arc has to be, the maximum dimension is from the uh, from the tangent point here through to the tangent point here on the arc. Okay, so the first dimension is this driven radius. So that radius is driven, as I said in the equation here, by... Uh, that ratio there, 0.9756. So the button height divided by 2 and then multiplied by that ratio. And then, oh, this is all based on the, the assumption that this line here is 22.5 uh, 20, degrees off the 45, same as in the first video. So if you want to watch that as to why I picked an angle, it was just easier to fig figure out an approximation if we had a fixed angle. And the blend start is this point here. And that is a ratio based on the driven radius as i said there so the driven arc radius multiplied by 0.3901 now 
Next step is to actually build the corner using the construction. So this is very much like the in the previous videos where there's corner construction and I've created, so we've got an arc segment here, set this arc segment goes right down to, to the horizontal, to the tangent there, because we're going to mirror this across. And we're only drawing in one blind, so that's the clothoid approximation, which looks, the curvature looks pretty much like it did in the, in the 90 de degree corner. It's the same setup, it's a degree 5 style spline, which gives you 6 CVs, and I've made this end curvature continuous to line, and this end curvature continuous to the arc, and then all of the spline control polygon segments are equidistant. Okay. So we exit that, we'll just do a extrude and mirror, so I've created that into the full button, and then I'm just going to overlay the apple uh, curves here. Okay, so there's the apple lines in red, so they're um, polylines, as you can see, uh, so I don't know how accurate they are, and you can see there's a bit of discrepancy around here between mine, which is further out, and the apple lines there. But then the apple line down here ends up bulging outwards anyway. So I take it with a grain of salt. I did try changing the arc on this end and the arc start angle. But because those are controlled by constants, I did end up getting bulging in my clothoidal transition approximation. So I decided just to leave it and say, oh yeah, that's close enough. Other thing I explored was offsetting. So I've offset the outside surfaces by 0.275 millimeters and then created a sketch using the edge and just to see how the um, how the offset looks because sometimes when you're offsetting splines you can sort of get funny curvature after offsetting and that looks okay and it looks like it's got the same relationship between the outer reference line and my result and the inner reference line and my result. Another good thing about using the equations is uh, we can change easily like the button height here and hit rebuild and because we're using these equations here to drive the ratios everything just updates so you can have a bit of flexibility in changing dimensions there. Whoop. Almost that almost failed though because this almost crossed the center line so that's probably about the limit without having to make it make the button longer. And I guess the last thing to do would be to have a look at some zebra stripes. So there we go we've got the zebras on I'll just turn the edges off. Fairly hard to evaluate exactly how smooth this might be um, like if you were doming the top or something like that based on the zebras but uh, it's a smooth transition. Um, could possibly do the G3 relief like I did in video 2 to to make that a G3 condition on each end of the transition. So there we go, we'll wrap it up there. That is making the Apple pill form uh, based on the Apple Watch 6 button uh, references from their um, guidelines for, for cases etc. Yeah, so it looks like those ratios and the clothoidal uh, stuff that came up in the first video will work to get something sort of approximately the right form. If anybody's got any questions or got any alternatives or anything like that, then just fire away in the comments. Always interested on hearing other perspectives and different ways of doing stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.